how it's feeling. That was uh, it's good. Kind of you like that? Stuff. Yeah. Give me a hug as well. Come on. Who's feeling a bit mind blown right now? A lot of stuff there. So um, yeah, I'm actually glad Stephen uh, covered a lot of things. Uh, he's done a lot of the work for me right now, which is good. Power of J JVN, right? Doing the work for you. So uh, as I promised you guys, yeah, I'll show you those. Um, so these are well. First of all, we've got a couple of Starbucks gift cards, right? What the idea is based on, so I, I'm a bit of a freak and I collect these wherever I go. I've got this weird thing where I travel to like places like Miami and Canada and I pick up like the, the, the Miami based gift cards and I'll come to London and I'll trade them with the, the, the people who work in Starbucks in London and mm -hmm. they'll give me like London ones and I'll take and give it to the American Starbucks. It's a bit of a hobby, right? So um, and I love the idea so much and you know, we then a few years back started uh, playing around with a similar idea. Uh, and so this is an example of one. It's defunct now. This is like from a few years back. But you can, can pass that around, have a look, and here's another one from the uh, gym we run. Uh, and this is a perfect example of what Stephen's talking about of JVing and, and, and also being unique. And the, the big word Stephen said is differentiation, which is something I'm going to touch on a lot later. Um, and differentiation does start with your offer. Before that, differentiation starts with what Simon talked about. Getting in, lay, in the lane of like what, what's your ultimate power that you can lean into and just do better than anybody? What's the one thing like you, you can't be competed on with, right? Because a lot of fit pros try and you know, compete in the wrong things. They can try and compete on price, first of all, which is the worst thing to do, right? Because someone, some idiot will always go cheaper than you. You can try and compete on, look at our space and our equipment, which is just very costly. We set up a new boot camp last week on, on a tennis court. Right? Because we're not competing on location and nice things. We'll have those things, you know, we'll, we'll buy those things when the company affords them. And some of our businesses do have big facilities, but we worked up to that. Uh, you can try and compete on, no, like, equipment sometimes. Like, we've got kettlebells. And, but what happens when your kettlebells aren't shiny enough anymore? People want a new thing then. All these external things are so hard to compete on, they're not sustainable in the long term. What you want to compete on, like the guy said, is number one, like your superpower, like what you do best. Okay, if it's like, if it's speaking, go and speak everywhere you can. If it's writing, write all day. If you're just amazing on video, dominate your area with videos, right? That's the thing you want to lean into and then, um, like, like I said, try and outsource the rest. Now, touching back on what Steven said there as well, we're going to go for a break in a second, by the way, but touch what he talked about there. Now a few of you guys, because obviously all this stuff is, is included in depth in our program, and a few of you guys have implemented this already, right? And you see a lot of the similar concepts. I know some of you guys are implementing this, the value stack. Um, and I know it's turned around some of your businesses already doing that kind of thing. And we've, you know, we've had, um, we had one, one fit pro in our program a couple of, a few weeks back where he was doing a 21 day offer. Um, but that's what he was offering, 21 days. He was offering like 35 pounds for it. We implemented the value stack thing as Stephen outlined there. And you know, we, we offer like base elements of what's the exercise component, the nutrition component, uh, the accountability support component, and then what are bonus components. And literally adding zero or low cost stuff to the, to the stack of the offer, he then went from 35 pounds to charging 75 pounds for it for the same 21 days and his conversions actually went up. We put the price to double, and he thought I was fucking crazy when I told him to do this. Uh, he's like, we're just gonna charge double. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, okay, but he tried it out, and he's paying good money to be on our program, so he did what, did what I told him to. And the next few phone calls he did, because we, we close everyone over the phone in our, in our gyms, because uh, like, when the office is so good, it sells itself. You don't need a one hour consultation with anyone. And he was telling us the conversions actually went up because there's a concept where certain brands or products become reassuringly expensive. You know, because if you're doing the offer stack like that and then, you, and then you try and do that price slash and charge 20 quid for it, it doesn't, it's not as appealing as you might think it is. You know, if someone comes to you right now and says, I've got this Ferrari, you don't want to buy this Ferrari from me, it's 200, 200 quid. Would you be jumping at joy or would you think, uh, what's the catch? What's wrong with it? Is it real? And they're going to poke holes in the price of The price buyers won't. The people that want the cheap bargain bucket stuff, they'll jump all over it. But they're generally idiots by nature. 
And you don't want to attract those people, right? You want people that are looking for value. So I love that. I love the JV, JV stuff. We can talk more about that and give you some specific examples later. Uh, we're doing a lot with that. But really, it's that, that offer. Um, that's the big starting point. What I'm going to talk about later on in my talk, I'm actually going to give you guys a bit of background on my story from starting eight years ago with a boot camp on a patch of grass up to now multiple locations in multiple countries and, and online coaching as well. And I'm going to show you kind of like also what, what Stephen outlined, different lessons of growth. Not that we're not, we're not doing 100 million pounds or anything, but I mean the lessons that we went from me being a solopreneur on my own, doing, doing the doing, to then being the marketer, to then being the owner, and then even becoming an investor in other companies with potential. So I'll give some lessons along the way of that stuff. So we're going to take a quick break now. Uh, we'll take 10, 15 minutes. It was 10 to 12. So if you guys aim to be back here at 12 o'clock, I know you won't be because that never happens, but if you aim to be here for 12, you should get back by five past. But on five past, we're gonna start. So if you're a bit later, that's, that's your own problem. Uh, Trevor is gonna be up next, and he's gonna be sharing some, some great things there. I won't spoil the surprise. Uh, and then I'll be on as well. So, is this helping so far, guys? Yeah, yeah. It's good stuff, right? I also noticed a lot, um, I should mention actually, it is a lot of stuff we're throwing at you, because we want, we want to just give you as much value as we can. Uh, and that's why you'll see on your seat, you have the sheet there. We understand that you're going to be getting a load of notes. And what happens in a lot of events is you take a lot of notes, you get a ton of things, you'll leave today and you'll do absolutely what? Nothing, yeah. right? So because, because of overwhelm, because of um, paralysis analysis. So what we do for you guys is there's a theme on the sheet there. If you want to book a call, it's totally free with one of my business coaches who work on my team and we teach hundreds of fit pros, they will do like a 30 minute call with you where you'll bring your notes and we'll just help you clarify it and make it specific and put it more into context for your business, you know, for your goals, your budgets, things like that. Uh, and it'll help you give you a more distinct plan if you want to. Okay, so if that sounds good to you guys, um, you can use, you can just text the offer there and then you'll be able to book in with one of my team and it'll help you do that then, okay? All right, so let's take a 10 minute break. Uh, get some coffee, get some water, whatever you need. There's some water at the back there as well for you guys. What's our biggest takeaway so far? Like one good takeaway you've got, just shout out. What can I wear with the wind? Mm-hmm, good. Thanks, Simon. Who else, what's one big takeaway? Simon? JVs. In yeah. Russia. What about I, them, what about them? For, for us, um, utilizing more of the networks we've got to amplify the current JV status all the businesses have got. It's funny you say that because you are a natural connector. You are, that's something I need to work on more because I don't like talking to people usually. But someone like you, like you're, you're really um, a natural yeah, connector, right? Is it just, is it just maybe taking, in the funnel. <laughs> are you talking more, taking all your relationships and moving them more slightly into deal flow, into actual more productive projects and? I never, like, I, I just do things like, oh, that worked, that felt good, let's, let's continue to do that. But it was actually seeing the structure, and I, it was point two, two, two. Do you know when someone goes like, this worked because of this? And I was like, oh, shit. Sure. Talk about JV deals, I can talk about it publicly now, but um, my clients, uh, Brian Grasso and Carrie Campbell, who are mindset coaches, and I do a bit of fitness stuff too. Um, you know, we've been working on big JVs at the highest level, and you know, the bigger the deals get, the longer these things can take. And you've got to be a real relationship builder and focus on the process. Because with JV, JVs, a lot of people get focused on the outcome, and that's what you get at some regular networking event, really where someone shoves a fucking business card in your face, and it's like, what do I get from you? How can I use you? How can I pour you out, basically? You get a knuckle sandwich. Yeah. Really so when you take, take it to the extreme, and it's really about building authentic relationships with people, and let the, let the deal flow happen naturally, if it's gonna happen. Every person you meet, I always say, well, they can be one of four C's, right? They're either a potential client, if they're not a client, they could be a collaborator, or a connector, or they could just be a, um, <laughs> a person you don't like to hang out with that much, we take them off the list, right? So everyone, everyone's a potential client, collaborator, or a connector. You can either, they can pay you for something, they can work with you on something, or they can connect you to somebody else. Maybe they've got nothing in common, and you know, but they can, and that's what like me and Steven know, he's in Amazon marketplace selling, we're in fitness stuff, but we, are trading connections all the time, right? And because we can all find 
a few degrees of separation. Just as well, just uh, your, your competitors are also a great source of mm -hmm. words. Yeah. And, and you Five think that, but they are because they do different stuff. Yeah, if you can complement them yeah. with something, you know. So yeah, so we'll talk. We'll touch on. Um, I'm going to touch on JVs in a bit on some newer stuff I've been developing, what I call power networking, which is a bit of a shit term. But um, who follows my podcast? Who watches my podcast? A few guys. Who's seen? Who's listened to the one on power networking I did most recently? Oh, a few of you guys, right? And the bar. Yeah. So. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah that's, that still freaks what me out. Watch it. <laughs> but um. <laughs> But I'll talk a bit more about that later. But but you guys listen to it like that's, that's pretty pretty edgy stuff, right? Yeah. It's it's like uh, what I call like the social networking. It's freaking insane. I've just secured those of you coming on our, our April um, immersion event in Cyprus next month. I've secured a three day venue for free for us. My team have been spending two weeks looking for a venue to pay for three days. I've used what I've told you guys and gone and got it for free on a rooftop terrace, and they're going to give us drinks and food as well. They're not going to run out of beer this time, are they? No, that was, that was a tragedy. <laughs> uh, so I warned them. We've got, a crazy, we've got a crazy Aussie coming and need more beer. Uh, so, and then talking about the JVs again, you know, this is exactly how I met everyone in this room pretty much, uh, especially me and um, Trevor have done a lot with, with, with JV marketing. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you're going to go into. You, you cover a lot of stuff. I'm not sure well, exactly. I didn't actually know I was doing a presentation until I got here, so. <laughs> oh, you're my board. Time was. <laughs> so, uh, so. I'm going to touch base on some copy stuff, blow some of what Stephen said to another level, because it complements what he said, mm -hmm. and a couple of surprises. Cool. Well, again, so I met Trevor again, again a few years ago. I think it's also through Dan Meredith connected us. He said, like, oh, you two are both grumpy cunts, you'll like each other. <laughs> I was like, all right, who is this fucker? Right? <laughs> he's probably thinking the same. Uh, we hit it off. I thought he's a sheep shagger from Wales, which he is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we hit it off, and then um, I invited Trevor over. I was like, yeah, I like your style. I like your no BS. I like this. Do you want to come over? And I'm doing a, a four day event in Cyprus. So we do our immersion every year. Do you want to come over? And this was what, three years ago, four years two ago? Two years ago. Two? Only two. Only yeah. two. Yeah, and I came over, and from there we've just done. We've done business deals together, made different connections together, uh, and most importantly, just a really good friendship that's, that's going to last a long time as well until he dies of alcohol poisoning. But, uh, <laughs> but until that point, mate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so it just goes to show the JVs ultimately can lead just really the best thing is just good friendships and, and being around people. And what I value most about guys like Stephen and Trevor is like these are guys that keep me on playing on a higher level. They don't let me get lazy and complacent. You feel like that, you, you achieve some success and the pressure cooker comes off and you start posting. And I just look at what these guys and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, these guys are smashing me, I've got to get back in the game. And uh, it, it sparks a fire in you and shows you there's always a new level to get to. And just, that's what, like, going back to what I said right at the start, guys, having that support network, not your average 95, 99% people, but the one percenters who get it and are just going to keep you moving and keep pushing you and keep pushing you. That's what you need in your life, really, if you want to succeed at a high level as an entrepreneur. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. All right, well, I don't know exactly what you're going to talk about, so I'll let Trevor come on and just do his thing. And uh, you can take it from there, yeah? All right, thank you. All right. Good day, everybody. Good day. <laughs> so, some of you will know sort of what my main background is, which is predominantly copywriting. And I've, I could probably safely say I've generated over a billion dollars in sales to my clients that I can track and or myself. Probably my biggest win was a client in the weight loss industry who I took from 125 million to 400 plus in two years. Right, by getting the offer right and also getting the freaking the message right, okay? What do, you, what do you have as clients? You have men and you have women, right? Predominantly maybe who has more women clients? Who has more men? Who has more women? Okay, men, a couple of people. Is your message the same? Is your marketing message the same to both sexes? If it is, you've got to freaking change that. Because you'll find by doing some digging and doing research and proper profiling, women will come to you for a certain reason and men will come to you for something different. So when you can really dig deep and find out what the true reason is and then put that into your message and your copy, etc., you're gonna close more business. Now, marketing incest, 
Um, it's something I first come across from a guy called Dan Kennedy, who Justin's very familiar with, Stephen's very familiar with. When I first got into copywriting in 2001, I shelled out $25,000 on an Amex card, because I didn't have any money left after the first dragon, I mean the first divorce, and bought the non-exclusive resale rights to all of his products and books. And of course, the bill was due in a month, right? And I managed to pay it quite well, right? But one of the things I learned from him, what he talked about is people do advertising incest and marketing incest. In other words, you're doing the same shit as everybody else. And I've seen a lot, I mentioned this to Justin, what, last time maybe, about the, I'm seeing a lot of the fit pros constantly doing marketing incest online. They're saying pretty much the same thing as everybody else, right? You've got to get your point of difference, right? Because, and again, this is not my question, right? But I'm going to ram it down your throats and please write it down because this is what your ideal prospect is asking you. It doesn't matter what business you're in, okay? It's why should I choose to do business with you over and above any and every other competitor in your industry? Right? Whether it's me as a copywriter, Justin as a fit pro coach wanker, right? Or Stephen in his business, or Simon, or you in your business, right? Why should I choose to do business with you over and above any and every other competitor out there? And when you can answer that to the best of your ability through everything you do, through your message, whether it be a video, a post, sales copy, talking to somebody face to face, what do you think will happen? You'll close more business, right? So one of the things that I want to talk to you about a lot, right, is stories, right? If we go back to caveman days, and it was sexist at the time, but I mean, ever since the caveman first dragged this woman by the hair and pulled her into the cave for sex, what's been happening? People have been telling stories. From the moment you're conceived, your mother, predominantly, has told stories while you were growing. When you were born, what happened? Stories. When you went to kindergarten, stories. When you went to elementary school or primary school, same thing, right? Stories all the way through. Who's got kids in the room? You tell them stories? Okay. When you're in the pub, do you tell stories or somebody tell you a story? Right? Story selling, right? Story sell, right? So you've got to get good at telling stories or at least have a crack at it, okay? So every single day, somewhere around you, whether it's in person, on Facebook, on a social media site, on a website, or someone tells you about something, you want to start to be conscious of how can you take that event or that story or that thing you witnessed and turn it into a story to sell your products or services. Okay, so last Sunday I was in Glasgow at um, Dino and Simon's event, which a few people know, know Dino, and we're at this uh, brew dog place having lunch. And we're crammed, like four of us this side, four that side in a booth that should take three. Right, because the place was full. And so I'm here, and the mirror up there, I happen to look up, and here is a birthday party. All right? But have a guess what sort of birthday party it was. The fucking white poodle dog birthday party. <laughs> Complete with all the hats and bullshit, and the balloons, and dogs are all over the table. And I had to go pee, so of course the entry to the gents is behind the table. So I'm looking, and there's about 10 to 12 dogs, right? And as I'm taking a the slash, they start singing happy birthday. And when I went back outside, one of the boys at our table said the dog even tried to blow the candle out, right? Now, the good thing is that those women at the party didn't give a fuck what anybody else thought, right? So if you're in, you're in mindset stuff, right? So imagine, you know, you even relaying the full story that I'm telling you now to get into the point was the women didn't care about their surround and they didn't give a shit, right? And then how you could sell it into a, into a call or, or some other service, right? And so, you know, they eventually left, right? And of course, we took photos, why not? So we could write stories about it. Now, I put that in my group, okay? Uh, Rob was sitting beside me did an email about it, because we're in tune of stuff that happens around us that we can turn into a story. It could be good service somewhere, bad service, 
right? You might start to think of shit, something happened six months ago that I can now turn into a story to generate you know, content for a blog, email your audience, put it in a post. Does that make sense? Right, so what I'd like you to start to do is, you know, I mean, make a note of it now, but then just grab a freaking notepad or do it, on, do it on your laptop and start to think of things like that and be like your birthday dog story, right? And make a list so you've got future content. You should never, ever be without content, right? Then all you have to do is segue the story into the next step, whether it's the offer to buy, click the link, fill out a form, get on a call. Very clear on that? Okay, in my own case, uh, years ago, I was um, sitting at home on a Sunday morning after a big night out in the booze before in Toronto, where I lived at the time, and I started watching a show called The Drug Enforcement Agency, right? Reality TV show. And as I'm watching it half dying, um, they did something which I related back to marketing. So let's say Justin was the, the criminal, the first one caught, right? Justin gets arrested and the chief cop's like, hey, hey Justin, and he's handcuffed, probably losing bodily functions. Um, we've got enough drugs to put you away for 25 years to life. However, we can make this look like a Sunday school picnic, right? In other words, a parking ticket. All you have to do is arrange for us to meet with your supplier. In other words, you call up your, your drug dealer as though you want to go and score and we'll do a sting. That's all you have to do. Now it sounds simple, right? Except you've been arrested and every time you call your drug dealer, if, if your voice isn't the same, if there's anything slightly off, guess what? They're going to know something's up. So this happens, so Justin decides to dob in Simon. Simon's his supplier, right? Next part of the show, same thing happens, right? Same offer is made to Simon. Can you be spying on us? I have, I have. <laughs> right, and so let's say to Simon, all right, again, same deal. Give us your supplier and this will be it'll be nothing. So he arranges Sting for Stephen and Stephen goes down. Now I'm watching this show. What do I get out of this being a copywriter and marketer? Right, they're making an offer. It's a limited offer and it's got a takeaway sale. It's got an expiration date. Here's the offer. You've got one minute to decide. If not, this is what's going to happen. So instead of going, yeah, that's, that's good, great, 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 I blogged about it. I emailed my list. I made five figures from the email, right? Just from taking a story, banging it out, and hitting send, right? I've since retreaded that story many times. I just adjusted it was yesterday to like 2008. Adjust the copy a little bit, and I make money every time. Right, you can retread stories as well. Make sense? I used your uh, tale of two people story again the other day. Oh yeah. The tale I always, once a year I always do that. I did it with a with a yoga instructor actually. Mm -hmm. It's a legit story about a month over a month ago. I had two yoga instructors asked about working with me, mm -hmm. and um, you know they both asked like, well, your your thing is mostly for gyms and fitness guys. Will it work for yoga? And one of them, the, the mindset difference here. One of them was like. Um, the principles don't sound like it would fit yoga, so I'll try something else. The other person said, um, I can see the principles look the same, so I'll give it a try. And uh, Meg, who was here last time, remember? Yeah? Um, and she's the one that now, and she's, she did her offer, created an offer, just like Stephen outlined, 200 pounds in ad spend, and she sold um, 36 clients at 50 pounds each. Mm -hmm. Wow. I saw, I mean, I saw the, I the post. That one, right? That's, but you did the, the, the tale of the Wall Street stuff. There's a tale of two yoga instructors and yeah. how it diverges and, and yeah, and that brings a few more yoga instructors came forward then and said, wow, I didn't know it would work. So I used that copy story you gave me. Yeah, and are you familiar with, anyone familiar with the Wall Street Journal story? Stephen would be, probably just, probably us three. Uh, the Wall Street Journal used, they, they knocked off an advert from 1918. It's the tale of two clerks and also the tale of uh, two men who went to war, right? So it's an old advert, copywriter modelled off the story, basically it's two people and that control copy, they generated 1.4 billion US dollars in subscriptions before any copywriter could knock it off. You know what? It works.
right? So basically, and to go further what Justin's saying, it's like you've got two people that are pretty much almost identical, right? Could be the same, the same sex, similar age, or they're both married, or you know, whatever it happens to be. And basically, they've met, they meet again later. One person's going great guns, having major success, or dropped a lot of weight, or it's very fit. The other person's still fat. Blah, 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 blah. What's the difference? One person signed up for your shit, the other person didn't. That's really the premise of the story, right? I think I've given you that fully in your group, but maybe I can send it if you'd have the full structure of it. I've used the Wall Street Journal story for selling erection device, orgasm shit, uh, MLM, travel club, guitar lessons, you name it, divorce women, Right, because you can really build the story quite easy as long as you know who you're selling to. And ultimately is the loser in the story doesn't buy your product or service and the winner does. Who wants to be the loser? Nobody. So, so they sign up, right? Stories are very, very good. Um, this is a book I just gifted to Justin, but I would suggest that you get it. Right? It's a guy called Simon Hartley, Two Lens of the Pool. Right? And he's a sports psychologist. But here's the kicker. He was training, or he was uh, doing the, the psych stuff for uh, an English swimmer called Chris Cook, right? And after a, basically a session one day, Chris says, Chris is bitching about he's not, he's not happy with everything. And Simon said, isn't your job just to swim two lengths of the pool as fast as you can? And of course, it really dented his ego. But reality is, that's all his fucking job was. Your job is to do two lengths of the pool as fast as you can, period. Right? And when they sort of really broke down everything and got rid of the rest of the shit in his training regime and everything else, what do you think happened to him as a swimmer? He went from being sort of average to, you know, Commonwealth Games, winning medals, Olympic finalist, etc., etc. This book goes into how you find your own two lengths of the pool and the answer might scare you, right? But I would suggest you get it's like 10 quid, right? Or I can arrange it for you. But here's something else that you touched base on before, right? This is a book, right, obviously, and it's $10. It could be $20 if it was thicker. Now, when you buy a book, it's only got a certain perceived value, right? If I said to you this book was $100, would you think you'd buy it? Probably not. Right. If I turn this book into a manual, right, same content, turn into a manual, talk about what Stephen said, value stack with bonuses and maybe a you know a 30 minute session with Simon, etc. etc. Pull it out for a hundred quid, it's gonna sell easily at a hundred quid compared to that at ten dollars. And I did that for a client years ago, right? All by getting the offer right. She had an e-book that she had on the website for $9.95 and a physical book is $24.95. She never sold an e-book at all, right? I literally turned her book, her e-book, into an online course, threw in a couple of interviews, which had some valuable content, and threw in uh, three 20-minute sessions with her as a bonus, right? Because they got a high value. And here's the thing, only about 2% of people ever took her up on those bonus calls with her, right? Which isn't a problem because the 98% of people, she doesn't have to worry about. The one to two percent who make that call, what do you think then happens? They then become the higher paying client, right? And I've actually told Simon, I went to dinner last Saturday night and I said, this book is great. I said, but I can get you a hundred bucks, probably even two hundred dollars for that same fucking book. So. See, we got the um, USB stick as well. This is, uh USB stick with our logo on it. This has uh, like five audio sessions. So you get people online, like, oh, I've got five audio recordings with some content. Have it free, usually. Mm -hmm. We charge 50 pounds for one of these. And they sell 50 pounds to get the same audio recordings on a, on a USB stick. Nice. High perceived value, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just as well, <clears throat> while you were telling that story, the pool, pool story, you know? Mm -hmm. I immediately started, like, I just had that moment in my, you know, the epiphany moment in my own mind of, like, shit, what? You know, like, I filled in the blank for you, which is obviously a, a key key thing here when I'm telling stories like that. And we, 
we do tell stories like the trailers talk about, but not not as well, I'm sure. Uh, but it's the filling in of the end is what's the key. And I just I got excited immediately because I was like, oh shit, that that's great because I only have to focus on this now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it's just so powerful. I just just want to feed that back. I, I had that moment even when we were telling the story. Good stuff, mate. Yeah. It, it's you know. His book is just fucking amazing. It's it's small. It doesn't need to be any bigger, right? But um, his book, I mean. Um, but what I want to get into next is touch base a little bit more on the offers and talk about outrageous offers, right? Myself as a copywriter, and although I don't write for clients too much anymore, I'm more mentoring other writers. Is that I don't start writing any sales copy until I've worked out the offer until I'm satisfied with that the offer can sell at the price either the customer wants to sell it for or what I think I can justify the price at, right? And I spend a lot of time doing, doing research, looking for the hook, looking for the big idea and coming up with the right offer before I start. Now, one of my clients years ago was in the pest control industry in the States and he bought, a, he bought one of my courses from me and we had the mentoring session and I came up with an idea that he was excited about, but his business partner thought was fucking crazy, right? In the process of finding out through them where they get most of their business from, in this case, they, most of their referrals came from other subcontractors in different type areas, right? Um, and so he knew his lifetime value, right? He knew what the initial, obviously, client was worth in lifetime value. And I said, all right, why don't you I said, all these guys drive pickup trucks, right? And he's like, yep. And I said, what's the price on a brand new pickup truck? At the time, it was around 17, 18,000 US. I said, all right, um, find out how much it would be to lease. It's probably 300 bucks, $350, if you didn't want to pay cash, right? They agreed to run this promotion, right? Here's where the outrageous offer came in. Whoever refers the most business to us in the next 30 days will get a brand new pickup truck for free. Right, his business partner thought I was crazy, but they cleared a hundred thousand profit in that month. Right, that's one example of an outrageous offer. It's good for the audio. Yeah. So you know, in your own business, right, you want to try and think of taking what Stephen said and think, how can you make your offer so outrageous? that people just can't help themselves but sign up for whatever you're offering. Uh, one of my old travel club clients in the States, um, they would target people getting ripped off or being ripped off by the timeshare industry, right? And their average prices went from about $4,000 to about $9,500 for their travel club, right? Now, here was the deal. If, if you, all you people will say in their room at their presentation, even if you didn't purchase their offer, um, if it was a couple, that would just be one, right? But basically every, every person that came or was part of a couple got given, as a, as a gift, a five night, six day cruise with either Royal Caribbean or Carnival Cruise Lines, right? To the value of $1,100, right? Now this is in Tampa, Florida, major cruise port, Everyone that lived there knew that that's the genuine value, right? So they're selling basically a four thousand to nine and a half thousand dollar offer. They're giving away a cruise with a known value of eleven $1 hundred dollars. How much do you think my clients had to pay for the cruise? Anyone want to throw a figure at me? Twenty-seven dollars. Right? Here's why. Cruisers do not make their money on the room. They make it on booths, casinos, shopping, and shore excursions. They know their numbers, right? Numbers are critical. But in terms of this as an offer, it's like, I don't have to buy shit. I've just got to sit through 45 minutes and I'm getting a free cruise. They knew their numbers on bumps on seats, which is critical, right? They're paying $27 or something with a known perceived value over here. Now, if they had said, come to the presentation, and we're gonna give you a $27 bottle of wine, not so exciting, is it? And it's only worth $27, that, you're right. So you understand, see what I mean? Think about how you can come up with something that's a low cost to you, 
and high perceived value there. I could do a whole day just on offers I've done. Can you all see that? All right. It's two adverts. In this case, it's a lead generation advert. This was one of Dan Kennedy's clients. I cannot take the claim for this, but I expand on it in depth in my own stuff. Right, so basically, it's a lead generation is a call to action. Headline with a call to action, you know, call your number. And, it come, and you know you've got a great culture when the people actually feel empowered enough to actually start building in and creating their own systems. So, I have people on my team you know, where I trust they have their own systems to follow, but I didn't build the systems for them. How many of you guys have had a call with um, JP, our head coach? I have no idea what the fuck he says to you on those calls. I just know the feedback is good. And so he comes to me and he's like, Justin, can we have more of a pro, like, is there a process? What should I do? And I'm like, dude, whatever you're doing is working. End of the day, you're, you're creating a good culture. The people are happy and we're hitting our targets. You don't need my system for anything. In fact, why are you tell me what your system is? And I had a call with JP, who was my head coach and salesperson, and I was asking him the other day, I was like, dude, I want to learn from you. I know, I know my sales system stuff, but what's your system? Because that's working in my business, and there's obviously, obviously a good culture behind it because you feel good doing it, right? And we can learn and pull from our own team members sometimes. And, you know, you're, as a leader, remember, a leader is ultimately the, the best leader is the biggest servant. And you're always asking your team, like, how can we do more for you? How can we help you learn? And how can I learn from you as well? The reason I hired guys like JP and Daniel, no lie, it's because I want other people to learn from. The mentor, the coaches that work for me, I hired them so I can learn from them. And, and, and they make me money, which is the best part of it, right? They're working for me, making me money, and I'm learning from them, right? Because there's always something we can learn um, from those people. So structure and culture, you've got to think about culture. now. Culture is literally like, it's, it's such a hard concept to talk about because it's so intangible. But the way to think of it is like, you know there's a good culture when your clients are happy and they feel that family feel. Do you guys have that in your business? Like you, there's like a family, community atmosphere amongst your clients? Yeah. That's client culture and that's good. Does it extend up, to, I mean how many of you have team members by the way? Like how many of you have a team? Only a couple, okay. So this will serve you guys for later on when you get into this, but uh, you know, this is where you make the mistake. A lot of coaches think that, what, what they do is, is, what, is what's called, um, they, they bring people on, but they're not looking to actually lead people or mentor people, they're just looking to get replaced, right? And this is what we call um, abdication, not delegation. Okay, delegating, or we call, you can delegate out of love and abundance, which means I wanna, help you do this job and I want to work with you and mentor you and add value to you as, as a team member working for me. What most people are doing is they're abdicating out of fear, which means I don't know how to handle this, I'm going to pay you money, you sort it out, I'm going to run and hide over here now. And then I'll come back in two weeks, first contact with you. Did you, did you fix that thing? And you're like, I, I, I don't know, what am I supposed to do? And you will fuck off and come back when it's done. Right? And that's how most people are running their business. So of course there's no culture there. And they think, oh, well they're not listening to me. I must need a better system. I must not give them a good enough checklist. You think the checklist is a problem? You think that's the reason people aren't doing it? Right? You can, and you can put systems and templates and I've given you the instructions and I've given you the manual, but you still don't feel like you want to do the job because there's no culture there because fundamentally, on an energy standpoint, you brought those people in to run away from something, not because you want to actually give more value and take on more work. If you hire someone, if you bring someone in to do 10 hours of training, take over 10 training sessions a week, you don't have 10 hours less. You're going to work 20 hours a week now because you're going to have 10 hours with that coach, shadowing them and aiding them along in the session, and another 10 hours teaching them after about the culture of like, so in the sessions as you're teaching the structure, this is how we do our workouts, this is how we do our warm up, this is how we do our sales calls. And you're gonna go another hour afterwards saying, here's the culture, here's why we did it like that. Here's our ethos, here's our core values, here's why we do these things this way. And what would you like to add to that? What do you think about that? Right, so in the beginning when you take someone on, you're gonna do double the work because you have to be a leader and a mentor to these people. Right, and that's what's missing in the industry today. And I always say that the first rule, if you want to build a team, 
successfully is you have to want to grow a team. They can't be like a chore. They can't be a thing in the way, right? It's the same with clients, right? You have to want to serve clients, otherwise clients just in the way of making this, doing this money stuff. You have to want to grow a team, right? So that's the first thing, everyone wants to grow a team and they come talking about if I can get a system in place. I'm like, no, do you want to put a culture in place? Do you want to create an amazing workforce that people are going to feel so happy and relieved and secure and appreciated working for you that they want to build a career with you and never leave. You know the real domination, you know our domination plan in our local area, it's not to get all the customers. We're not trying to get all the clients to love our gyms. We want all the trainers to love, to want to work for us. We suck up all the trainers and the talent, all the, client, all the clients come with them, right? Our business is on one layer, it's a product for your clients. But when you get past that point, which you will very quickly when you use all the marketing strategies you've been given today, uh, and the offers and the copywriting, and you know, that's why I'm not gonna to touch on marketing too much now because we've covered a lot on that. But when you have these clients coming in and you're in a place where you've got more belief and you think, wow, yeah, this could be bigger now, this could grow, I'm gonna need some help with this. This is the first thing to think about. Your team members are going to become your new clients. Your team members will become your new clients. I'm in business to give a great product to my team, to Eva, to JP, to everyone else on my team. I wake up every morning first of all, and I'm like, how can I make my team's life better? My business working for me is a product that gives them a certain lifestyle and outcome. Just like your boot camps or yoga sessions or nutrition plans are a product that give your clients something they want. Right, and that's how I think of my business, right? So it's like, what can I do? Because what, what do you want to do? You want to attract, retain, and ascend clients, right? Don't you also want to attract, retain, and promote and ascend team members? And it's so evident, right? And again, I'm telling you, this stuff is going to be really helpful for you in the coming years because it's so evident when we lose a bunch of clients, what do we do? If you've built an audience or a list, you go to the list. Well, we'll do an offer, we'll, we'll, we'll fill up the spaces with some more clients. When it comes to we lose a trainer, or trainers quit automatically, unexpectedly, that's what like a, uh, a client will tell me, oh, my trainer's left, what do I do? I'm like, well, go to your list of prospective trainers. Oh, I don't have anyone. So you know that as your company is growing, you're, the more clients you have, the more trainers and staff you're gonna need, yet you didn't develop a pipeline of potential trainers because you're not treating your team members like clients. It's a business on top of a business. So you need a funnel in place. We have a funnel that, just like the clients, every day we're attracting people, that we're attracting talent and team members, trainers, uh, web graphic people, f um, coaches, whatever it might be that we need, who are opting in, filling out their resumes or application forms, and booking in for a call with us, just like the clients do. Right, it's the same process. Where do, we, where do you think we got that client process from? Right, and so you know we'll spend only a couple of couple of pounds in advertising for this maybe, but we're always advertising. If you want to become the top trainer in your area, our vision is to create the leading team of world class coaches, body transformation coaches in the area. If you want to join our team and get trained into that, apply now. And we have like a string of hundreds of trainers in every area now waiting to hear from us about potentially getting a job with us. Most trainers don't want to go out on their own. They don't want to go out there and pay rent and take risks and pay insurance. Most of them just want to work for somebody else. They want the financial security, but they don't want to work in a, in a system that doesn't take them anywhere. And they also want to get appreciated, not work for an asshole. If you can give people that, these trainers will stay 30 years with your company. Right, and we talk about lifetime client value, think about lifetime team member value because the more time and energy and experience these team members get, we, we, know we have a plan that we want to retain a client for at least one year. If we can retain a client for one year, we've done our job right. With a team member, we have a two year retention, team, uh, retention target for a team member. If we lose a trainer within two years, we're doing something very wrong. Right, it means we didn't appreciate them enough or we didn't have build enough culture where maybe where we thought we appreciate them enough, but they didn't feel that way. Their perspective was different for whatever reason. Or they felt that there was no progression in our company. 
A lot of trainers will leave if they think they're outgrowing you. If they can't get the creative expression they want or they can't generate the ideas they want inside your company, it's because you are not growing fast enough. I had this conversation with a client the other day who said like, he's got this great girl working for him. She's been with him two years in their small studio. And he's like, but she's just getting so good. She learns and learns and applies new things and has all the ideas. And I got the feeling she's going to leave soon because she's not satisfied with my company. And I said, well, because you haven't grown the container to keep her challenged. If there's no challenge left in your business, no room for growth, of course she's going to go somewhere else. Your job is to be two steps ahead to keep the company growing by doing the marketing, building the things, watching the finances, <coughs> build a bigger container and a good team that like, they will fill it for you and they'll keep it full. But you have to be the one leading the charge to keep making something bigger, keep making more opportunities. We have our coaches now, like JP is doing these events out in, in Spain for us. And he asked me, he's like, hey, Justin, do you mind if I take what you're doing in London and do it in, uh, in Spain and with all the Spanish personal trainers? I'm like, yeah, bro. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. <laughs> like, you, you go ahead and do it, right? And they're translating my program. Him and Daniel, our other coach Daniel's in Germany. He's translated our program into, into German and is now sharing it and selling it to German fitness professionals. I had no idea he was even doing that till he told me afterwards. That's culture. You know, these guys know I'll give them the ball, I'll give them enough structure, but I also have the culture to let them go and do what they want to do and let them push themselves because they feel safe doing it. They feel safe taking risks under my company because as a leader, I always tell them like, you know, if anything goes wrong, ultimately it's my responsibility. If you go out there and fuck something up, ultimately it's my responsibility for it. And they know that. It doesn't let them off the hook, it doesn't mean they'll go crazy, but they feel safe knowing that ultimately I will take the responsibility and say, well, maybe there's something I didn't teach you properly, or maybe I let you do it before, I, before you were ready, or maybe this or maybe that. And they know that's how I'm gonna be with them. And when you have that with your team members, like they will literally take the ball and run a mile. It can start with something as easy. If you have a gym manager or an admin person, you can start, but the first time I did this and I left someone alone, because people, people, people have so much talent, right? But they don't show it because they're afraid. They're not stupid, they're afraid of making a wrong move. They'd rather like not take action on this great idea they have in case it's wrong or you don't like it and they piss you off because they don't want to lose their job or their status in the company. But if you show them, you take off the risk risk reversal for them, they'll run and do it. So I would tell my gym manager, like I'm gonna go away for a week, and I say look, if anything goes wrong, up to the cost of like, it costs less than 200 pounds to fix, you decide what to do. So that's if, if one or two people want a refund or a, a wrong order comes through, if it costs up to 200 pounds to fix, which is virtually anything, you make the call, and I'll take ultimate responsibility for it, for, give, for giving you the benefit of the doubt. So if it goes right, I'll come back and we'll review if anything happens. If you took an, an action and it went good, fantastic, we'll add it to our operations manual, as in this is how we'll do it in the future. If it doesn't go right and it goes wrong, I'll take full responsibility, I won't blame you for anything, and we'll work on a better solution together based on the feedback. And when you start giving them these little bits of um, respon added responsibility, you know, again, you're giving them more responsibility by taking responsibility and your team members will go and do amazing things for you. That's all the culture. So again, structure and systems can go on all day. If that culture isn't there, then you are still going to be the one putting out all the fires. And you probably have good team members, but you're not letting them shine because they don't, they don't feel comfortable enough doing it. And eventually, that resentment's going to build and they're just going to go off and do it themselves somewhere else. You know what I'm saying, guys? That makes sense. Some of you know, if you haven't got team members yet, it might not click. But remember this, and it'll, it'll come in very handy one day. All right, I'm going to open up another five, ten minutes or so to any Q&A, because we've covered a lot today. Um, any specific questions on any topic of marketing, ads, offers, sales, fulfillment, team building, scaling, anything else at all? Has everyone got their, has everyone got their one thing they wanted from today, or do you still want more clarity on anything? You get what you wanted? Yeah, I think... Don't be afraid to ask guys anything you want yeah, right now. The key thing is to get more clarity, personal. 
clarity. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And I think there's just been a lot, so I think it's kind of going away in the process. <coughs> so. Okay. Just on that, a lot of a lot of people who I speak to think that if they've not got personal clarity, that something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I spent a long time in that. Just go and do as much as you can and find the things that you enjoy, and then it'll just yeah. That's the best thing. Yeah. Go try. Go do. Finding down action. You never know in two years what you'll be doing. Yeah. Things will look a lot different. But motion hmm? beats meditation. That's a Gary Halbert. Mm -hmm. So, any other questions, guys? Anything? Do you want to talk about? what you asked about earlier, or are you going to say that for the mastermind session? So yeah, guys, by the way, we are doing the mastermind session after this. Um, our private clients who've flown in, uh, we do a, um, it's uh, another three hours, which is more intensive. We would do a lot more one-on-one -on -one with you guys. If any of you guys want to upgrade and come to that, if you're a non-client, it's uh, 150 pounds, I think. For the next three hours, we'll go from, we'll go from uh, 3 p.m. till about six in here. If you're interested in that, just come and talk to me at the end. Uh, but again, guys, last time, I'm not sure if anyone have any questions or any other topics they want to cover. We've all got stuff you're going to go and take away in plan, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, good. Well, thanks for coming out today, guys. A bit of a lower turnout than usual, but you were here, and that's the main thing. You're going to get the benefit. Make sure you've got something you're going to apply and take action on, because if you just learn and don't do anything, nothing's going to happen for you. All right, guys? All right, guys, so good. Give yourselves a round of applause today.